Operation Storm was the last major battle of the Croatian War of Independence and a major decisive factor in the outcome of the Bosnian War. It was a decisive victory for the Croatian army, which attacked across a 630-kilometer front against the Republic of Serbian Krajina, and a strategic victory for the army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. The HV was supported by the Croatian Special Police advancing from the Velbert Mountain and the Arbor located in the Bifak pocket. In the army of the Republic of Serb Krajina's rear, the battle launched to restore Croatian control of 10,400 square kilometers of territory, representing 18.4% of the territory it claimed, and Bosnian control of Western Bosnia was the largest European land battle since the Second World War. Operation Storm commenced at dawn on 4 August 1995 and was declared complete on the evening of 7 of August. Despite significant mopping up operations against pockets of resistance lasting until 14 August, Operation Storm was a strategic victory in the Bosnian War, effectively ending the siege of Bitak and placing the HV. Croatian Defense Council and the Arbor in a position to change the military balance of power in Bosnia and Herzegovina through the subsequent Operation Mistral II. The operation built on HV and HVO advances made during Operation Summer 95, when strategic positions allowing the rapid capture of the RSK capital NIN were gained and on the continued arming and training of the HV since the beginning of the Croatian War of Independence, when the RSK was created during the Serblog Revolution and Yugoslav People's Army intervention. The operation itself followed an unsuccessful United Nations peacekeeping mission and diplomatic efforts to settle the conflict. The HV's success was a result of a series of improvements to the armies themselves and crucial breakthroughs made in the ARSK positions that were subsequently exploited by the HV and the Arbor. The attack was not immediately successful at all points, but seizing key positions led to the collapse of the ARSK command structure and overall defensive capability. In Lika, two guard brigades quickly cut the ARSK-held area, isolating pockets of resistance positioning a mobile force for a decisive northward thrust into the Karlovac core area of responsibility, and pushing ARSK towards Banovina. The defeat of the ARSK at Glina and Petrinja, after a tough defense, defeated the ARSK Banager Corps as well, as its reserve was pinned down by the Arbor. The RSK relied on the Republika SRPSKA and the Yugoslav militaries as its strategic reserve, but they did not intervene in the battle. The HV and the special police suffered 174 to 211 killed or missing, while the ARSK had 560 soldiers killed. Four UN peacekeepers were also killed. The HV captured 4,000 prisoners of war. The number of Serb civilian deaths is disputed. Croatia claims that 214 were killed, while Serbian sources cite 1,192 civilians killed or missing. During and after the offensive, 150,000 minus 200,000 Serbs, or nearly the entire Serb population of the area formerly held by the ARSK, fled and a variety of crimes were committed against the remaining civilians there. The International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia later tried three Croatian generals charged with war crimes and partaking in a joint criminal enterprise designed to force the Serb population out of Croatia, although all three were ultimately acquitted and the tribunal refuted charges of a criminal enterprise. In 2010, Serbia sued Croatia before the International Court of Justice, claiming that the offensive was an example of genocide. In 2015, the court ruled that it was not genocidal, though it affirmed that the Serb population fled as a direct result of the offensive and that serious crimes against civilians had been committed by Croatian forces. 
As of November 2012, update, the Croatian judiciary has convicted 2,380 persons for various crimes committed during Operation Storm. Background. In 1990, following the electoral defeat of the government of the Socialist Republic of Croatia, ethnic tensions between Croats and Serbs worsened. Serbian President Slobodan Milosevic used Franjo Tudman's actions to his advantage portraying the Croatian leader and his Croatian Democratic Union as a reincarnation of the Ustase, a fascist movement that had ruled Croatia during World War II. In August 1990, an insurgency known as the Log Revolution took place in Croatia centered on the predominantly Serb-populated areas of the Dalmatian hinterland around the city of Nin as well as in parts of the Lika, Kordons, and Banovina regions, and settlements in eastern Croatia with significant Serb populations. The areas were subsequently named the Republic of Serbia and Krajina and, after declaring its intention to integrate with Serbia, the government of Croatia declared the RSK a rebellion. The conflict escalated by March 1991, resulting in the Croatian War of Independence. In June 1991, Croatia declared its independence as Yugoslavia disintegrated. A three-month moratorium on Croatia's and the RSK's declarations followed, after which the decision came into effect on 8 October. The RSK then initiated a campaign of ethnic cleansing against Croat civilians and most non-Serbs were expelled by early 1993. By November 1993, less than 400 ethnic Croats remained in the United Nations protected area known as Sector South, while a further 1,500-2,000 remained in Sector North. As the Yugoslav People's Army increasingly supported the RSK and the Croatian police was unable to cope with the situation, the Croatian National Guard was formed in May 1991. The ZNG was renamed the Croatian Army in November. The establishment of the military of Croatia was hampered by a UN arms embargo introduced in September. The final months of 1991 saw the fiercest fighting of the war, culminating in the Battle of the Barracks, the Siege of Dubrovnik, and the Battle of Vukovar. In January 1992, an agreement to implement the advance plan designed to stop the fighting was made by representatives of Croatia, the JNA and the UN. Ending the series of unsuccessful ceasefires, the United Nations Protection Force was deployed to Croatia to supervise and maintain the agreement. A stalemate developed as the conflict evolved into static trench warfare, and the JNA soon retreated from Croatia into Bosnia and Herzegovina, where a new conflict was anticipated. Serbia continued to support the RSK, but a series of HV advances restored small areas to Croatian control as the siege of Dubrovnik ended, and Operation Maslinica resulted in minor tactical gains. In response to the HV successes, the army of the Republic of Serb Krajina intermittently attacked a number of Croat towns and villages with artillery and missiles. As the JNA disengaged in Croatia, its personnel prepared to set up a new Bosnian Serb army. As Bosnian Serbs declared the Serbian Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina on 9 January 1992, ahead of the 29 February 1 March 1992 referendum on the independence of Bosnia and Herzegovina, the referendum was later cited as a pretext for the Bosnian War. Bosnian Serbs set up barricades in the capital, Sarajevo, and elsewhere on 1 March and the next day the first fatalities of the war were recorded in Sarajevo and Doboj. In the final days of March, the Bosnian Serb army started shelling Bosanski Brod, and on 4 April, Sarajevo was attacked. By the end of the year, 
the Bosnian Serb Army, renamed the Army of Republika Srpska after the Republika Srpska state was proclaimed, controlled about 70% of Bosnia and Herzegovina. That proportion would not change significantly over the next two years. Even though the war originally pitted Bosnian Serbs against non-Serbs in the country, it evolved into a three-sided conflict by the end of the year. As the Croat-Bosniak War started, the RSK was supported to a limited extent by the Republika Srpska, which launched occasional air raids from Banja Luka and bombarded several cities in Croatia. Prelude. In November 1994, the Siege of Bihak, a battle of the Bosnian War, entered a critical stage as the VRS and the ARSK came close to capturing the town of Bihak from the Army of the Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina. It was a strategic area and, since June 1993, Bihak had been one of six United Nations safe areas established in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The U.S. administration felt that its capture by Serb forces would intensify the war and lead to a humanitarian disaster greater than any other in the conflict to that point. Amongst the United States, France and the United Kingdom, division existed regarding how to protect the area. The U.S. called for air strikes against the VRS, but the French and the British opposed them citing safety concerns and a desire to maintain the neutrality of French and British troops deployed as a part of the UNPROFOR in Bosnia and Herzegovina. In turn, the U.S. was unwilling to commit ground troops. On the other hand, the Europeans recognized that the U.S. was free to propose military confrontation with the Serbs while relying on the European powers to block any such move. Since French President François Mitterrand discouraged any military intervention, greatly aiding the Serb war effort, the French stance reversed after Jacques Chirac was elected President of France in May 1995 pressuring the British to adopt a more aggressive approach as well. Denying Bihak to the Serbs was also strategically important to Croatia, and General Janko Bobetko, the chief of the Croatian general staff, considered the potential fall of Bihak to represent an end to Croatia's war effort. In March 1994, the Washington Agreement was signed, ending the Croat-Bosniak War, and providing Croatia with U.S. military advisers from Military Professional Resources Incorporated. The U.S. involvement reflected a new military strategy endorsed by Bill Clinton in February 1993, because the U.N. arms embargo was still in place. MPRI was hired ostensibly to prepare the HV for participation in the NATO Partnership for Peace program. MPRI trained HV officers and personnel for 14 weeks from January to April 1995. It has also been speculated in several sources, including an article in the New York Times by Leslie Wayne and in various Serbian media reports. That MPRI may also have provided doctrinal advice, scenario planning and U.S. government satellite intelligence to Croatia, although MPRI, American and Croatian officials have denied such claims. In November 1994, the United States unilaterally ended the arms embargo against Bosnia and Herzegovina, in effect allowing the HV to supply itself as arms shipments flowed through Croatia. The Washington Agreement also resulted in a series of meetings between Croatian and U.S. government and military officials in Zagreb and Washington. D.C. On 29 November 1994, the Croatian representatives proposed to attack Serb-held territory from Livna in Bosnia and Herzegovina, in order to draw away part of the force besieging Bihak and to prevent the town's capture by the Serbs. As the U.S. officials gave no response to the proposal, the Croatian general staff ordered Operation Winter 94 the same day to be carried out by the HV and the Croatian Defense Council, the main military force of the Bosnian Croats. In addition to contributing to the defense of Bihak, the attack shifted the HV's and HVO's line of contact closer to the RSK's supply routes. 
In 1994, the United States, Russia, the European Union and the UN sought to replace the Vance Plan, which brought in the UNPROFOR. They formulated the Z4 Plan giving Serb majority areas in Croatia substantial autonomy. After numerous and frequently uncoordinated changes to the proposed plan, including leaking of its draft elements to the press in October, the Z4 plan was presented on 30 January 1995. Neither Croatia nor the RSK liked the plan. Croatia was concerned that the RSK might accept it, but Tudman realized that Milosevic, who would ultimately make the decision for the RSK, would not accept the plan for fear that it would set a precedent for a political settlement in Kosovo, allowing Croatia to accept the plan with little possibility for it to be implemented. The RSK refused to receive, let alone accept, the plan. In December 1994, Croatia and the RSK made an economic agreement to restore road and rail links, water and gas supplies, and use of a part of the Adria oil pipeline. Even though some of the agreement was never implemented, a section of the Zagreb-Belgrade motorway passing through RSK territory near Okukani and the pipeline were both opened, following a deadly incident that occurred in late April 1995 on the recently opened motorway. Croatia reclaimed all of the RSK's territory in western Slavonia during Operation Flash, taking full control of the territory by 4 May, three days after the battle began. In response, the ARSK attacked Zagreb using M87 Orkin missiles with cluster munitions. Subsequently, Milosevic sent a senior Yugoslav army officer to command the ARSK, along with arms field officers and thousands of Serbs born in the RSK area who had been forcibly conscripted by the ARSK. On 17 July, the ARSK and the VRS started a fresh effort to capture Bitak by expanding on gains as made during Operation Spider. The move provided the HV with the chance to extend their territorial gains from Operation Winter 94 by advancing from the Livna Valley. On the 22nd of July, Tudman and Bosnian President Alijer Izabegovic signed the split agreement for mutual defense, permitting the large-scale deployment of the HV in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The HV and HVO responded quickly through Operation Summer 95, capturing Bosansko Grahovo and Glamik on 28-29 July. The attack drew some ARSK units away from Bifhak, but not as many as expected. However, it put the HV in an excellent position, as it isolated NIM from the Republika SRPSKA, as well as Yugoslavia. In late July and early August, there were two more attempts at resurrecting the Z4 plan and the 1994 economic agreement. Talks proposed on 28 July were ignored by the RSK, and last-ditch talks were held in Geneva on 3 August. These quickly broke down as Croatia and the RSK rejected a compromise proposed by Thorvald Stoltenberg, a special representative of the UN Secretary-General, essentially calling for further negotiations at a later date. In addition, the RSK dismissed a set of Croatian demands, including to disarm, and failed to endorse the Z4 plan once again. The talks were used by Croatia to prepare diplomatic ground for the imminent Operation Storm, whose planning was completed during the Bridgeuni Islands meeting between Tudman and military commanders on 31 July. The HV started large-scale mobilization in late July, soon after General Zvonimir Servenko became its new chief of general staff on 15 July.